This is a special edition of Late Night Help. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to go to Atlanta, Georgia. We're going to spend some time with Dr. Ben Stong from the Talos uh, Facial Plastic Surgery uh, Center in Atlanta. Uh, and we're going to talk about a number of things. We're going to talk about social distancing. We're going to talk a little bit about what you as a patient can do if you have to go to the doctor, what you should do in case you have to go. Uh, Dr. Strong, welcome back to Late Night Health. Is there something that a patient should do if they're going in to see you as a plastic surgeon or they're going in to see their interns because they're not feeling well? Is there something that we can do as patients to prepare for our office visit now? Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, you, you should certainly check with the doctor's office and, and see what sort of protocols they have in place to continue, you know, seeing patients because things are not business as usual at this point. And, um, you know, we've had to develop some unique strategies ourselves to uh, be able to um, continue to see clients and patients and provide services um, until, uh, you know, we hear otherwise. With the virus, we need to be proactive. Everybody does. Doctors, lawyers, patients, clients, everybody has to be proactive in preventing the spread of this disease. Uh, what are you doing in your office to help ensure that your patients and your staff don't get sick? Uh, absolutely. That's our number one priority at this point, um, to ensure that we don't get sick um, as best as possible. And uh, essentially, we've, we've done several things. Um, we are currently not using our waiting room. Our waiting room is closed down, and we're not seeing anywhere near the number of uh, patients um, that uh, we, we typically do. Um, any non-urgent follow-up clients are, are moved off, um, and we'll schedule them uh, back once, um, once uh, you know, things are more clear. Um, and then as far as we see our post-operative patients for our general post-operative care, uh, we see we're doing all of our uh, cosmetic consults for the most part by virtual consultation um, and then performing minimal numbers of in-office procedures. Uh, when a patient contacts our office to be seen um, and needs to come into the office for whatever reason, uh, we screen them with phone questions about travel or symptoms and assuming that they don't have any issues with that, um, we will schedule them. Um, we basically are only scheduling one to two clients an hour at most. Um, they come to the office on the day of their procedure or their, their visit. Um, they, we've put, we tell them they have to be on time. If they're late, uh, we may not be able to see them so that you know we're preventing overlap of clients within the office itself. And that's so patients won't be in touch with other patients correct so they, they don't ha they, ha they don't have any contact with other patients so they don't even see them in my office at this point um and they call from their cars once they arrive and then assuming that everything is good to go they come upstairs and are brought immediately directly into a private exam room um and then we screen them with a infrared thermometer um to make sure that they don't have uh, any elevated temperatures as well Assuming all that goes fine, we use hand sanitizer and hand sand washing, uh, hand washing, uh, you know, as far as our disinfectant protocol, uh, as, and also we use germicidal wipes on all our countertops and exam chairs in between each patient. Um, and then once I actually go in to see the patient, because I can't necessarily maintain six feet of distance from the individual patient, um, I also, do, none of my staff nor myself touch any patients with uh, bare hands. We use uh, exam gloves, and then our exam gloves are changed out frequently, um, even with each individual client, not just in between clients. Um, and then we do whatever we're supposed to do at the visit, and then um, they're discharged out of the, the clinic without ever seeing another patient. And without really being touched. And without being touched, correct. So. Right. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can, um, but, uh, you know, it's not a perfect situation. You can't completely, you know, so di socially distance yourself uh, from, from your clients or your patients, no matter what type of doctor you are. Um, so that's sort of how we're handling it at this point. How is telemedicine working for you? And that's 
virtual medicine using FaceTime, Skype, uh, Zoom, whatever protocol is in your office. How does that work for you? It works fine. Or even we'll just, if people prefer to talk on the phone, they can just send email us pictures um, and just chat. I mean, for most, most of the part, um, I can perform all those consultations over the phone or with video, just, you know, sort of looking at them. Now I do tell them I have to see them in person if we're going to do a surgery at some point in the future. Um, but it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to do tele, teleconferencing and telemedicine at this point. Are surgeries safe to do at this point? I mean, we know that going into a hospital, people get sick going into a hospital. <laughs> and, and I'm laughing because that's what you, it's not supposed to be that way, but it is or can be. You know, they're, they're asking everybody to stop all non-elective surgery or all elective surgeries at this point. Um, you know, uh, anything where you're expo- exposed to mucous membranes, I guess, could be risky, particularly if, uh, if um, you know, there was an unknown diagnosis there. Uh, but, you know, really the fundamental thing that we really need is, you know, to be able to move forward is, is, is good, simple screening methods, which we don't have. Um, you know, it, uh, there's been an abject failure in our leadership uh, uh, to provide good testing for our people around the country. And, and um, you know, if I could, I would I would screen any prospective uh, surgical patient in particular. It'd be part of their preoperative workup to screen them for COVID-19. Um, but we can't get our hands on it. Um, and uh, that's not that's not, that's a fault of the of the government, not not of uh, the you know sole proprietors of businesses who need to, to function uh, to be able to keep their lights on and pay their bills and pay rent and pay their mortgages. And at the same time, do you think that the government stood back and waited too long before they implemented some of the procedures that they're doing now? Oh, absolutely. It's not even a think. I mean, it was a month and a half, two months of abject denial that there was even going to be a problem. Our rate was going to go down to zero. No problems, no problems. And then you know, denying science and denying our experts. Um, and then now it's, it, it keeps dripping out more and more. But, you know, the full picture is not really come into play for most part. But, you know, if you really put, you know, try and connect the dots between what's actually being said by the experts and, and our government, you know, um, we're in for a little bit of a ride here. There's, you know, we're going to see um, this peak sometime in mid-late summer, probably. That's where the, the top of the bell curve is going to be. Uh, and then it's going to slowly, you know, meander back down over about, you know, another year. Um, we're, we're looking at 18 months before this can be eradicated. And eradication is only going to come once a vaccine's developed. And vaccines are about a year off. We're at, at best, if it even works. The testing part, do you know how long that takes? If you tested me today, when would you know if I had COVID-19? I think the turnaround is three days right now. Yeah, they're 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 mailing them off right now to, to independent laboratories um, uh, where they're being tested. But uh, I did I did see that some tests are coming out where they'll be able to, hospitals will be able to perform these tests in the hospital laboratories, which would be a, a big bump. You know, they'll get you know, the turnaround will be a lot shorter. Um, uh, and hopefully, there's instantaneous testing, almost bedside testing that we can do. You know, similar to, you know, flu and, and other uh, infections, you know, strep, where we can develop rapid tests. Um, but uh, um, we don't really have those at this point. At Kayla's uh, uh, facial plastic surgery in Atlanta, you have a number of, of services. Do you ever do things like skin cancer, for example, those kinds of uh, procedures? Absolutely. I mean, we, we that was how I built most of my practice was doing a lot of Mohs reconstruction. Now we're, you know, moving, we've moved much more towards almost 100% cosmetic at this point. But um, yeah, we do, skin, we've done, we have done uh, lots of skin cancer reconstruction and continue to do it. Um, it's not as common as it used to be for us. But yeah, we, we do, in, you know, some, some good work for skin cancer patients. And, um, uh, you know, we were supposed to, I was booked for a trip to uh, Peru um, to this uh, end of April, beginning of May, for a uh, cleft lip, you know, mich- cleft lip palate mission trip, um, but uh, that got canceled for the because of the COVID nineteen. So we're not going this year. Oh, that's a who really needed. Have you done that before? Yes, I did it last year. It was a it was a great trip. We we went to Ica, Peru, and uh, spent 
a week down in Ica. Um, we took over the hospital and operated on 80 kids, did, you know, about oh 80 surgeries um, in about a four-day period, um, and it was super rewarding. Um, I was really looking forward to it and super disappointed that it wasn't, isn't going to happen this year. What are you doing at home with your family? In other words, how are you isolating your family, spending time? What are you doing? Well, uh, you know, I think we, 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 uh, we, you know, we have, I, I have a young, uh, baby at home. Um, and, uh, I have a uh, nanny who comes over, so she's not going to daycare, which is a good thing right now where we don't have daycare op- issues at this point. Um, and, uh, my, my wife actually works for the CDC, um, and they are indefinitely on teleworking at home. So she's at home and isolated work while she's working. And then, um, you know, we just spend the evenings here, you know, taking care of the baby and putting her to bed and then maybe watch some movies and, you know, just hang out. We're nothing exciting. Uh, work out a little bit. We had, you know, I just went on a bike ride this afternoon by myself. That's a excellent social distancing activity. If you cycle at all, um, you know, you can get out there and get outside without being at risk or exposing yourself. That's and obviously uh, with uh, your wife working for the CDC, you're both very smart people. Well, thank you. She may be smarter though. Yeah, she might be. That that is true. Yeah. All right, <laughs> uh, Doctor Stong, thank you very much for uh, sharing some uh, insights with us. We appreciate it. Kalos uh, facial plastic surgery in Atlanta, Georgia. What is your um, website? Uh, website is kalosplasticsurgery.com um, and the office number is 404-963-6665 and we can certainly perform teleconference uh, consults for anybody interested from anywhere in the world. Uh, health to you and your family. Thank you. You too. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. This is Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. Join us at latenighthealth.com. We'll have uh, Dr. Stong's uh, pretty picture on our site again as well as uh, information about him and links to his uh, website. I'm Mark Allen. We'll be back.